Welcome everyone, welcome to my channel Marine Sea Time. Today I will be discussing about the maintenance and inspection of the connecting rod of an auxiliary engine on ship. So in this you can see over here, this is how uh, after removing this connecting rod, we have to spray, uh, we have to dye penetrant and test the connecting rod for any cracks over here. So this is a spray which we spray on this connecting rod. After spraying this we will keep it, uh, keep it for 1 to 2 hours and then after we will apply developer and then we will see that if there is any crack in the connecting rod. Now, the joint faces. So the connecting rod inspect the joint faces, damage in the form of visible wear marks and fitting or even cracks be in the joint faces. So the joint faces is always in a relative moment between uh, relative moment between the surfaces. So you can see this is a. So this is a, these are the two joint faces over here. So the lower bearing and the upper upper shell. These two are always in a relative moment. So there can be cracks here. So visually we cannot see, but by this dye penetrant method. We can actually check the cracks over in the in this region. Now you can see this is the how we check. Uh, so you can see this. Uh, these are the two surfaces which we have to check. So this uh, these are the two. Uh, these are the two joint faces we have to check in these two, and this is the connecting rod bolt. So carefully smooth. Single raised spot in the segregation caused by the fitting and impact mark with a file. Now connecting rod bolts. Inspect the connecting rod nuts for seizure in the threads and fitting on the contact surfaces of the screw thread. So you can uh, in the connecting rod nuts we have to see the threads and the contact surfaces of the screw threads. So we will check the we will, we will check over here the screw threads and also we will check we will uh, we will check this portion and this one. If there is any uh, marking over here or not, if there is any crack or not. So, in order to check this connecting rod bolts, turn the connecting rod nuts onto the bottom position of, of the bolt. So, what we will do is that uh, so this is the this is the connecting rod bolt. So, what we will do is that we will put bolt over here, uh, we will uh, screw the bolt over here, and we will check the bolt is going into the uh, this thread or not. If this is going, then it's okay. That bolt the thread of the uh, nut and this screw. Uh, and this bolt is okay now the third measurement in the connecting rod is the measurement of the big end bore so after inspecting the connecting rod and the connecting rod bolt we will measure the big end bore for the overlay so we'll after dismantling it we will uh, compress this to a hydraulic nut at a desired torque and then we will measure the overlay at this position number one number two number three number four and number five Number four and number five. At five point, we will measure the uh, diameter by the internal micrometer. So you can see this is the internal micrometer. This is the internal micrometer. We have to measure this on six points. So you can see over here number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. So these are the five points you have to measure by this inside micrometer. And after measuring this, so mount the bearing cap onto, onto the connecting rod by means of a connecting rod bolt. Tighten the bolt with prescribed pressure, which I have told you. Measure five different diameter in the group of the bearing. Register the measurement. Calculate the maximum overlay as the difference between the biggest and the smallest diameter method. Check if maximum overlay is exceeded. So we have to subtract this maximum value to the minimum value, and then we will check the overlay. If the maximum overlay is exceeded, then then we have to uh, then we have to replace the connecting rod if the maximum overlay is exceeded. So maximum overlay you can see is 0 0.06 mm over here. So this is the maximum overlay value. If this uh, if the maximum overlay is exceeded above 0 0.06 mm. Then we have to uh, change it. So you can see over here. <coughs> so for connecting rod one in the example, the maximum overlay is 0.02 mm, and thus reuse is acceptable. For connecting rod two in the example, the maximum overlay is 0.125 mm, and therefore the connecting rod is rejected. So in the connecting rod number two, you can see the maximum overlay. This is the connecting rod number one. This is the connecting rod number two. So maximum overlay is the connecting rod two is 0.125 mm. So this is more than 0 0.06 mm. So we have to replace the connecting rod and we have to reject this connecting rod. If the maximum overlay is exceeded, remove the complete connecting rod screw and bearing cells. Maximum overlay is not exceeded, reuse the connecting rod. So what are the connecting rod bolt rejection criteria? Now suppose the loading of the connecting rod bolt of four stroke is more severe than two stroke engine and as RPM difference, as RPM of uh, two stroke is almost 100 and 200 RPM for this four stroke. So connecting rod bolt will will exert more extreme stress than this uh, two stroke engine so 
Now, centrifugal force and gas force set up bending and shear stresses in the bolt. As a result, fatigue failures occur in the bolt. So there can be any fatigue failure in the bolt as uh, the piston goes up and as the piston moves down. So there can be a fatigue stress developed in the bolt. The bolt should be constructed of material having high resilience and should not stiffer with respect to bearing housing. So what all things we'll check in this collecting rod? We'll check the corrosion by acidic glue oil. Discard if any present on sinks. So check the collecting rod bolts. If there is an acidic glue oil corrosion, if there is any corrosion by acidic glue oil. Second, check the length of the bolt. This is very important. Check the length of the bolt against the new or bolt floor and with longer yielding of the material. Should have taken place in the bolt in these circumstances. If the bolt length is exceeded, then the uh, then the new bolt tolerance. Then you have to renew the bolts. Check for mechanical damage, especially on the sinks. So there can be mechanical damage, especially on the sinks. And check for the fracture by non-destructive test. So by doing this non-destructive test, we can check if there is any fracture in the connecting rod bolts or not. So if the bolts have seizure in threads or pitting on the contact surface, renew the bolts and the screw. And if the bolts cannot be turned onto a bottom position by hand, renew the bolts screw. So if you put the nut in the bolt, if you put this, uh, if you put the uh, connecting rod bolts into the position and then screw it. If it if the connecting rod bolt is not going into the connecting rod, if the connecting rod bolt is not going into the connecting rod, or if the nut is not going into the connecting rod bolts, then we have to renew the bolts and screw. Check the landing faces for uneven tightening. Discard the bolts when either designated life over speed failure or piston seizure has occurred. So we have to if if the life of the connecting rod bolts has exceeded. So we have to replace this after a running hours. After a certain running hours, we have to replace the connecting rod bolts because there can be a piston or if there is a speed failure or piston seizure has occurred, then also we have to replace this connecting rod bolt. So inspection of connecting rod bolts. Inspect the surface of piston pin and connecting rod bolts. Measure the clearance between piston pin and bush. Check if maximum clearance is exceeded. If the specified clearance is exceeded, contact main diesel engine for replacement. So we have a push, uh, connecting rod bolts. So what all inspection we have to do is that we have to uh, check the outside diameter of the piston pin and the outside diameter of the bush of the connecting rod and we will difference these two values to get the clearance between these two and if this clearance is exceeded then we have to contact main diesel engine for replacement so this is all about guys connecting rod inspection and maintenance hope you all were understood in the later topic i will bring you about the main gearing shell so thank you god bless you